now to the U.S. state of Michigan and the mother of a boy who killed four pupils at his high school in 2021 has sought to put the blame on her husband. Jennifer Crumbly is the first parent in the U.S. to face a manslaughter trial for a mass shooting carried out by a child. Ethan Crumbly was 15 at the time of the shooting and is now serving life in prison. Who is Jennifer Crumbly? She is a 45-year-old mother of a 15-year-old son that took a gun to his high school and opened fire, killing four students and injuring others in 2021. After this mass shooting, they were sent death threats. Jennifer and her husband James went into hiding. When they were found, they were arrested and charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter for their son's actions. They both pled not guilty in a Michigan court. Hello, all you legal-minded friends. You're here because you know information is power. So in this video, I will use this recent verdict to highlight the risk to parents when their children commit crimes. This case hit home as I grew up across from the USA border of Michigan, separated by the Blue Water Bridge, St. Clair River, and Lake Huron. Michigan was our closest neighbor, so I was keeping a close eye on this case, as it was the first of its kind, where parents were being held criminally liable and accountable for their child's actions. Now, we normally hear that parents are held liable for civil claims, such as when someone's injured, they might you know, have insurance to claim on. But here's what the prosecutor had to say about these parents, that they failed to get their son mental help. They failed to secure a gun and ammunition. Yet at the time, there was no laws to secure a gun. And in 2023, Michigan brought a new law requiring guns to be stored securely in any location where young people might be present. In a minute, I'm going to tell you what's happening with James Crumbly, the father. This trial had to do with the mother, Jennifer Crumbly. So let's uh, take a look at what happened. The verdict came back and the jury made a decision on the 6th of February 2023 after almost 11 hours deliberating. Here, let's hear what they had to say. <laughs> That is correct. I am. Could you please read your verdict? Individually? Sure. Okay. Um, on count one of involuntary manslaughter as to Madison Baldwin, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. On count two of involuntary manslaughter in regards to Tate Muir, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. On count three, as to involuntary manslaughter regarding Hannah, Hannah St. Juliana, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. And in count four of involuntary manslaughter against Justin Schilling, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Thank you for allowing me to see it. And I'm going to close all the jurors. So what we just heard there is that she was found guilty on all four counts. The judge requested that each juror be pulled to confirm individually if that was their decision. Now, we know how important that is. And if you watched my videos on Alec Murdoch, you may know that Ms. Becky, the clerk of court, that's a hard one to say, was accused of tampering with the jury. You know, it was alleged that she was trying to influence them. The hearing did take place, and I think the outcome will make for another great learning moment. So I'm hoping to create something for you that will highlight the concept of a fair and just process. So back to this case, the sentencing for Jennifer Crumbly will be on the 9th of April and um, she could be uh, facing up to 15 years in prison. So that will be interesting to see how that plays out. Her husband, James Crumbly, so the shooter's father, did request a separate trial from his wife and his trial will be starting the first week of March. I believe it's 6 of March. So, you know, we'll have a look out for that. And I've left links in my description area below if you want to know more about this case. So if you want to know what would happen in England and Wales, 
the age of criminal responsibility is 10 years old. If a child has committed a crime under 10 years old, they cannot be charged criminally. But let's just say the parents can be held responsible if they repeatedly uh, get into trouble and the parents do not take responsibility, you know, to make, take steps to take control of their behavior and could uh, be given a parenting order. These orders do not give the parent a criminal record. So there was an article written, albeit quite some time ago, in the bbc.co.uk that was concerned about the number of young people uh, getting into serious crimes as there was young people as young as 10 years old being arrested for firearm offences. And the charity Mothers Against Violence said that gangs were using young children and they also used their girlfriends and they also used people who the police were unlikely to search. So that was quite interesting. So now I'm just going to touch on the gun laws in England and Wales as they are subject to licensing. They are a privilege, not a right. You must also be able to demonstrate to the police that you have a good reason to have one. Is it for work, leisure, sport? Is it a collection or for research purposes? And there is a guide regarding firearm licensing laws. So the minimum age to carry a firearm or shotgun is complicated. Broadly speaking, you must be over the age of 14 years old to have a firearm certificate. And a person under the age of 18 is prohibited to purchase, own or hire a firearm and to have ammunition. And it is also an offense to sell or let anyone under age, um, you know, partake in any of this. So an adult must assume responsibility. The guide is 233 pages long. So I suggest you read it if you need to know more detail. So I just want to point out something else that I think is important is that parents can be held responsible for their ch child's welfare and stuff like that. So neglect is a pretty serious charge. And I would say if a young person were to have access to firearms and then did something really dangerous that the parents could have prevented, you know, could have foreseen and prevented, then I, I think this would be a very serious charge. But people have said back and forth, maybe she would be found guilty, maybe she wouldn't, but this certainly sets a precedent for any parent out there listening. And if their kid is in trouble, whether they have mental health issues or not, you have to pay attention. What are your thoughts? Well, certainly it is an uh, unprecedented case and charges that have been brought in this particular case. And for those of us who are parents and have raise children through those challenging teenage years, we recognize that there are things that our teenage kids don't always share with us and, and can be uh, concerning. But I think in this particular case, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this case, I think, was driven in great respect uh, with the fact specifics of the background and particularly, I think what was compelling was the way that Jennifer Crumley um, handled that school meeting the day of the shooting. I can understand what, why the uh, Crumbleys have been charged. I am, you know, scared to where this is going to lead to. I think parents should be held responsible you know, to a certain extent. And um, I think this indicates to us that by the jury voting for the parents to be held responsible, it indicates to me that people are, you know, saying that, look, we, we have to be responsible for our children and we have to take some accountability. So what do you think? By leaving a comment, you may help someone else that will read your comment. And of course, I love to read all comments as they are valued and together we can be more informed. And this information may help you or someone you know. In the meantime, 
On this channel, you'll find a variety of playlists to suit every curiosity about the justice system. And we provide you with a visual to information and the process. Going through a legal worry is devastating and the Who Knew and Why Me playlists are designed to help you or someone you know. So please like this video if you like this kind of content. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to be notified when I'm going live or upload another video. I'm Karen Cole from Legal Minded Friends. Information is power, meaning if you know something, you can make decisions that are right for you.